सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली दी एक्साइटमेंट इन दैशनलिस्ट कांग्रेस पार्टी दैट इज शरद पवार पार्टी और पवार फैमिली पार्टी दैट बीन गोइंग ऑन for several days and the reason i am not saying exactly what's happened right now although as i started to record this alerts came that sharad pawar has agreed to withdraw his decision to resign or to give up his party position and will continue but we don't know we don't know by the time you watch it what the situation is because this has been running a bit like you see a drs situation with a <coughs> with a run out or a stumping in a cricket match right when the umpire says okay give me this view give me that view give me <coughs> front on spin vision etc etc so umpire takes every view and everybody then makes their own opinion depending on what suits you because if you are on one side you think that side is right you want the batter to be out or not out depends on which side you are on so something like that's been going on with ncp that's the reason tough to say anything definitive but what's been happening with ncp and what's been happening say in karnataka and some of the attacks that have come from the bjp on the congress and its opposition parties parties opposing it in karnataka in the election campaign also and some of the defense that's come from the bjp as well all of that adds up to a question the question is dynastic politics is dynastic politics good or bad and also is there any exception in our politics to dynastic politics now ncp which is going on is purely a dynasty drama we know that sharad pawar has been running the party he and his family own the party he has one child his daughter she is the one who most people expect his heir apparent and she will inherit the gaddi from him but at the same time he has got a nephew ajit pawar it's a very close knit joint family ajit pawar has been in active in politics for a very long time he is much more senior much older he could have, he could have been chief minister in 2004 he could have been chief minister in 2000 19 so on and so forth but at the same time you can see that sharad pawar continuing means that he has kicked this can down the road now in this situation see the one thing that the bjp gets right in terms of its positioning in terms of its political positioning or any party's political positioning it's become very difficult now to have one well defined statement or one well defined proposition that works nationally if you say you are for the poor everybody is for the poor if you say you are for distribution to the poor welfareism everybody is for welfareism you might say 2000 rupees a month someone else will say 3000 then you will say 3 and a half thousand like that if you say nationalism everybody says nationalism if you say hindu everybody says i am a hindu and ends up in in a temple so what is it that works for a party is something for a national party is something that might be common to the entire country and that for the bjp is its attack on dynastic politics why do we say so we say so because if you look at the bjp suppose in the next election there are 400 seats out of 543 i'm making a very conservative and very ballpark estimate say in 400 seats out of 543 in the country bjp is a leading contender against somebody i can tell you that in almost 375 out of those 400 if not more right in 375 out of 400 bjp candidate will be up against somebody from a dynastic party now a lot of these more than half of these or many more than half of these will be from the congress party which is a dynastic party but once again the parties that get large number of seats at least in double figures tmc dynastic party because now the nephew abhishek he's being dressed to take over from amta banerjee everybody knows that he is the successor to be dmk very much a dynastic party in telangana ksr's party 
fully a family owned party similarly if you look at maharashtra then shiv sena congress because nationally it's a dynastic party although in maharashtra it has many many dynasties as well but we are not counting the mini dynasties we are only counting the situation where a family owns a party again if you start from the north right up north look at the map of the country in jammu and kashmir the mufti dynasty the abdullah dynasty and the congress of course the larger dynasty so all of the bjp's opponents are dynasty owned parties again if you look at the rest of the country in jharkhand which is relatively a smaller state jharkhand mukti morcha is owned by a family in bihar rjd lalu yadav and his family own the rjd one family owns the party there is a difference between a dynast heading a party where the dynast can be replaced by someone else that is not the situation in any of these parties in any of these parties somebody from the dynasty has to take over the party then you come to odisha although the bjp and navin patnayak they they fight sort of a more qualified sort of a contest right you can see that they nuance their situation between the state assembly and parliament and in national parliament also it's not as if bjd is an adversary of the bjp as is the case in andhra with ysr cp but in both cases bjp candidates will be up against bjd and ysr cp both of which bjd as well as ysr cp are family owned or dynasty owned parties which brings us to up both sp and bsp sp of course is fully a dynasty owned party a family owned party bsp already while mayawati does not have an immediate family of her own as an offsprings but she is already in the past given positions to her brother and her nephew so to the extent that bsp matters it is still a family owned party and similarly similarly even if you go to smaller parties in these states that will oppose the bjp say aimim in telangana that is oasis party that's also a family owned party so barring a few seats say in delhi or in punjab or maybe couple of other seats in the country where the bjp may come up against aam aadmi party as its main rival or maybe in kerala or maybe maybe in tripura when it comes up against the left in some seat barring those seats bjp will always be fighting a party that's owned by a family or a dynasty that is what the numbers tell us and that's when the bjp says that look our fight is with dynastic politics that makes some sense to a lot of the bjp's voters now dynastic parties how do we define a dynastic party we have also run stories saying that look bjp might keep complaining about dynastic politics but over time bjp itself has grown so many mini dynasties of its own so many of the bjp's ministers so many of the bjp's key people are children of senior leaders of the past so what is the bjp complaining about so there the bjp has now been careful so the prime minister himself bjp has now been careful because they know that they face this criticism and they face this reality check in fact we carried a story i think about two or three years back listing all the people in the bjp all the key people in the bjp who are sons and daughters or family members or spouses or sons and daughters and law children in law of well known senior bjp leaders and there are running dynasties three generation dynasties the sindhias for example but now both the prime minister and amit shah have finished it. so the prime minister speaking on 26th of november 2021 on constitution day what he said was to reassure his own party people many of whom happen to be from political families and that was to say look don't feel embarrassed about the fact that you've come from a political family or a political lineage or political dynasty and you got the party ticket and you are contesting because that does not make us the bjp a dynastic party so how did he how did he nuance it he said and i'm quoting him from a story that dk singh our political editor had done for us you can see that story i'm sharing a link with you you can also see the front page of the story on your screen see the headline and also see the strap line there what the prime minister is saying and also see the key quote so the prime minister says look our problem is with the parties dynastic parties which are for the family by the family these parties have lost all democratic character all their democratic character they work 
contrary to the spirit of democracy and constitution. Then he goes on to say, and I quote, when I say dynastic parties, I do not mean to say that more than one person from one family should not enter politics. Ji nahi, the Prime Minister says, a party does not become dynasty if more than one person from the family enters politics and succeeds by virtue of their ability and blessings of people. That's what the Prime Minister says. And then he goes on to explain, if one family rules a party from generation to generation, that's a threat to democracy. And once again, during the Karnataka elections, that's the reason I made a reference to Karnataka elections, Amit Shah at a press conference said that, look, people from various families continue to work in our party. That is not the issue. But our party is not owned by one family. Look at the Gauda party, for example. Now, that's the party I did not deliberately list in the earlier list of parties, which I, which I said BJP will come up against. Because once again, knowing the Gaudas, we don't know which side they will be on in the next parliament elections because they've been on all sides of this political divide. But even if the BJP were fight against the Gora party or the, or, or the JDS, maybe so for four, five, six seats or three, four, five seats in Karnataka national elections, that will be fully a dynastic party. In fact, that will be even more a dynastic party than any other because that's one family, the Gora family, which has fielded more members in politics, in electoral politics than any family in the country except the Gandhi family, the Nehru Gandhi family, but then we extend that family by bringing in Feroz Gandhi, Vijay Lakshmi Pandit, Sanjay Gandhi, Menka Gandhi, Varun Gandhi, etc. So it takes that many in more than one party to add that number. But Gauda family has done it all by itself in one family. So that is what he is referring to. Amit Shah is also referring to as a dynastic party. Now look at the map of India. If you look at the map of India, you will see that right from the top until the bottom, north to the south, barring maybe Kerala to some extent, to a very large extent, almost every state has politics dominated by dynastic parties or, dynast or by dynasties, small dynasties, mini dynasties, or slightly bigger dynasties or medium-sized dynasties. Now, there are dynasties also within the parties. But just look at the broad picture. Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir has... Muftis and the Abdullahs, Punjab has Shirumani Akali Dal, which has now become purely a family-owned party. That is the Badal family's party. The BJP does not count for that much in Punjab. Amabni party is not yet at all a family-run party. But if you look at the Congress, Congress right now, the Amrinder Pri has gone to the BJP. So to that extent, BJP has borrowed the Congress party's dynasty in Punjab. But a lot of the Congress leaders in Punjab also are sons and daughters of earlier senior Congress leaders in the state. Haryana, Haryana is the home of dynasties. Arun Shori once wrote that famous article, Bilal, Dilal, Bilal, so Bansilal, Bajanlal, Devilal, they've all made their dynasties. At least two of their descendants own their own parties. One of them is in partnership with the BJP. In some cases, at least in two cases, these dynasties have split over time. One side going on one side, one on the other. One actually has split into three at one point of time. So again, a dynasty run state where BJP stands out. So BJP's chief minister there does not have a family. That helps uh, in dynastic politics. Himachal Pradesh, both Congress and BJP had dynasties. Congress had the Veer Bhadra Singh dynasty. BJP has Prim Kumar Dhumal, whose son now, Anurag Thakur, is minister. At the center, Rajasthan, son Sachin Pilot is Rajesh Pilot's son. Gelod, Gelod's son has contested elections. He lost the last time. Now he heads the cricket association there. So that's another dynasty in the process of coming, at, coming up. And similarly, if you go to the rest of the country, we have counted already Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra. Chhattisgarh is a state which doesn't quite have any family-run politics. Strong family-run influence right now. But Everywhere else, everywhere else, if you come to Karnataka, the state so much in news right now, we told you about the Gauda family, that is a dynasty of dynasties in the country, but also Basavraj Bomai, he's the son of S.R. Bomai, who used to be chief minister of Karnataka, although for a different party, for a party that would not have been so friendly with the BJP, but why does that confuse anybody? Yediyurappa is a dynast within the BJP. He is now the kingpin of the BJP even now and his son is being accommodated. Again, Tamil Nadu, DMK, we know, all of us know that this is, this is a party 
owned by Karunanidhi's family and the other party, AIA-DMK, which is today not owned by a family or run by a family, actually is an ally of the BJP. It's not an adversary of the BJP. So it is in this situation that India's politics is situated. Now, does it help or does it hurt a party's politics if it's owned by a dynasty or a family? So what I will do is, in the true spirit of cut the clutter, I will list five under each head, right? Five benefits, five positives and five negatives or five harmful outcomes of being a dynastic party. So first of all, let me tell you the benefits. So the first benefit is party cohesion. The reason the Congress party cannot move beyond the Gandhi family is that they know and Congress people tell you that as long as the Gandhis are in charge, their word is law. People might fret and fume, some people might leave, but the party stays together. But the moment someone else becomes the head, as Narsimha Rao did, party starts breaking up. In fact, even now, people keep saying a lot of the people on the a lot of the critics of the BGP say that why doesn't the Gandhi family leave the Congress party alone? The fact is, if the Gandhi family left the Congress party alone, the Congress party will break up into so many pieces that they will run out of letters in the alphabet. Already I, O, U, D, etc., etc., they've already done Congress for Democracy, Congress party errs. Number two, succession becomes automatic and it is predictable. So what happens is that there is no leadership vacuum in a party like that. That also is a positive. Number three, there is ideological flexibility. So ideological flexibility means the owner of the party decides what ideology the party follows. Samajwadi party might be very anti, pretense might have been very anti-American, very anti-Western, but when it suited it, it voted in favor of the nuclear deal, right? As did OVC's party. So family-run parties have that flexibility because whatever the boss decides becomes the ideology of the day. Next point, the legacy continues. The legacy continues from generation to generation. What that means is that even for the voters, so very often voters also vote from one generation to the other for the same family-run Party. That's happening, say, for example, for RJD, for Samajwadi Party, for Shiv Sena, so on and so forth. And fifth, there is automatic induction of youth. Now, that needs a little bit of explaining. In our politics, very few young people really come into politics. Entry barriers into our politics are very high, competitive politics. Old times are gone, where you could be a student leader, and from student leader, you could school uh, politics to college politics to university politics and so on and so forth. Some of this happens in some parties, particularly the BJP and to, to the extent that it matters in the left. But otherwise, entry barriers are very high. But if you are a family-run party, then you know that sons and daughters and sons-in-law and daughters-in-law, they are automatically inducted into politics at a very young age. And they start learning from that point. That is what happens with many family-run corporate groups also. So that, these are the five positives that I'm counting and don't worry, I'm coming to negatives as well now. And negatives, in my view, happen to be heavier. So negatives, number one, there is death of ideology. So once it's a family-run party, you can be flexible with ideology. That can be a plus, but it also means that your party does not follow one firm ideology all the time, right? So then it is the death of ideology. Number two, I don't want to use the word death, but it is almost, it's a crippling blow to meritocracy because everybody knows where the glass ceiling is. Everybody knows, no matter how well I do, whether it's a, say, Praful Patel in the NCP, right, or anybody else in the NCP, you know that no matter how well you might do, you will not, you will not take the position of a Pawar because those top positions will be with them. And I'm not specifically only focusing on the powers, but that's only because they are in news right now. So there is a death of meritocracy, there's a glass ceiling, and after a while, everybody knows that, look, whatever it is, the son and daughter will be ahead of me in the race. They are not even in the race, they are already ahead. If you look at the example of NCP again, Ajit Pawar could have been chief minister in 2004, he had had experience, NCP had got two seats more than the Congress party, but yet, Sharad Pawar did not give him that position. It was conceded to the Congress party. 2019, 
Uddhav Thakre was reluctant, DK Singh tells me, to become chief minister and once again if Sharad Pawar wanted Sharad Pawar could have given, given that position to Ajit Pawar, but he did not do so. Why? I can only guess. And that guess can only be that within his family, there was a daughter and there was a nephew. And once he put the nephew in that position, that would have undermined the daughter's position. So family-run parties also have a meritocracy problem. Number three, it is nearly impossible for family-run parties to expand out of their states. Now, NCP might have got its seat odd here and there. JDU might have got a seat odd here and there. Well, the JDU is not really a family-run party, but it's a one-man party. TMC tried to expand it to Goa and elsewhere, did not work. Similarly, the Sangma family party in Meghalaya, they tried to expand. They might have got a seat odd here and there, but those, those were little local phenomena. So none of these family-owned parties, including SP, BSP, etc., which come from big states, have been able to expand to other states. Now, KCR is trying through BRS, but once again, you can see that the degree of difficulty there is very high. So that's third point. Fourth, charisma of the leader does not transfer from generation to generation. So one leader, Balayam Singh Yadav, may have a charisma, but does Akhilesh Yadav have the same charisma? Lalu Yadav had the charisma. Does Tejashvi Yadav had the same charisma? Sheikh Abdullah had the charisma. Farooq Abdullah did not have the same charisma. Does Umar Abdullah have the same charisma? So as they say in the corporate world, that when whether with family-run businesses, with every generation, one-third of the value of the business is lost. It doesn't happen with everybody. There are lots and lots and lots and lots of exceptions. But generally, that is what happens if you apply the law of averages. Similarly, in politics, in family-owned parties, charisma does not transfer automatically from generation to generation. And finally, and this is something very important now, the key man risk is very high. Keyman risk is very high in the sense that, look at the situation now. BJP owns the government in Delhi. They put the agencies, if they want to put a regional party or a family-run party in its place, because all their rivals are family-run parties, all they have to do is to get the agencies to go after key members of that family. And once that happens, even if that family manages to stay out of jail, all their time is then expended in fighting these cases, etc. So that becomes then a very strong key man risk. So I would say if you weigh the two sides, the five negatives are much heavier than the five positives. And that's where, that's where it becomes a big advantage for the BJP nationally in politics. They may not be able to get the better of these fam family run parties in their boroughs or in their states or in their regions, but nationally, this becomes a very strong proposition that we are fighting family and parties and we are not a party owned by any family or any dynasty. We are a meritocracy.